Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Oscar. So today we'll talk you through what's new in C Sharp 8. Cool. Yeah, so we talked about uh, the .NET Core release, yeah. .NET Core 3. Um, it brings C Sharp 8. Yeah. And actually, C Sharp 8 will only be brought with .NET Core 3. That's new, right? Yeah. So there, um, yeah, the, the language, the language features won't be available in the other, in 2.2 or full framework. Okay. Um, so I want to show you a couple of things. Yeah. Um, a really big list. But I won't go into a everything, but uh, picked out some really interesting ones. Uh, for me, one of the uh, cool features of the previous uh, releases was uh, pattern matching. Yeah. Really combined, <laughs> you know, compacts your code. Actually. Yeah, and a lot less clutter, and, and it's more readable. Right? And still readable, yeah, more readable even. Uh, so I'm gonna, they, they did some, some extensions. They're putting it everywhere, as it seems. Um, for instance, you know, uh, just read this, read this method, for instance. <coughs> it's a switch statement, takes in color, color band uh, of type rainbow, it switches, and it's, a, it's a, actually an enum. So it switches, returns. So you see a really big pattern there. Like, yep. well, this uh, looked like a target for pattern matching. It does. So they have the switch expressions now. Um, and you can, yeah, compact it to this, which wow. is... It looks almost like a dictionary, just written out. Yeah, and, and the arrow actually, it just says, this means that. So yes. rainbow.red means Points a new RGB go. color with yeah. red all the way up there. Yeah. So this is cool, right? And you see uh, the the default. Uh, so we're yeah, just dismissing that one yep. uh, because like, it's nothing. And like you can read this. Yeah. It's really I, nice, right? I haven't seen it, but I can read it straight up. So yeah. cool. So that, that was the first one. Um, slight uh, different one uh, does property matching. Okay. So uh, can you can you see what this does? Because that's the. Well, looking at it, uh, it's a method to compute the sales tax, and it based on the state that's I guess in the address location. Exactly right. It calculates the the sales price. So if you open the bracket, Visual Studio will actually help you with yeah. IntelliSense. Say uh, which um, yeah properties are in there, and you just match the uh, the state on uh, WA, and it will pick that one. Cool. It's cool, right? This, so this is awesome. More pattern matching. Um, I really like that one. Uh, next one, you know, this is a normal using statement like we want. Yeah, uh, and, and as you can see here, as soon as you have the closing bracket for the using, yeah, it's, it disposes because that's what the using yeah, does, right? Yeah, hence the comment. Like you notice the comment. Um, so you always open a block, but like you can see it here, like it, it adds an extra indent in the yep. code uh, because you have to scope that thing. True. And if you have three, four, five usings, you know how that code looks like, right? <coughs> yeah, and then of course, if you have different types of actions that you're doing inside of your using statements, you have to know when to close up the using statement because I think we all have had the, the point where why is this stream disposed? And then yeah. somewhere you dispose a reader which disposes the underlying stream. And something, then yeah. That's crap, right? Yeah. And like we, we know this pattern and it's fine and we, we work with it. But what does this bring? The using declarations is called. It brings, again, decluttering of your code. But so if I you look a, at this I one. I see a semicolon. Yeah, normally, like in this one, you shouldn't put the semicolon there <laughs> it because it won't break, we'll do everything. The file yeah. isn't in scope. Well, it doesn't work because you don't have the file in scope, actually. Yeah, true. Um, but in this case, you can just open the file. It's there. It's just a variable. Yeah. And it's disposed the bottom of the scope. So, so as soon as the, the thing goes out of scope, yeah. it's automatically disposed for you? Like a, like a normal, you, you uh, assume a normal variable. Well, the garbage collector will pick that up. But, yeah, true. Um, the variables only work in the scope. So now you have a using declaration, you're just using var, and then you end with the, with the semicolon, of course. And for that scope, you have that thing. So, so if you have five, yeah. you have five. So in the end, what this means is that uh, all the magic that happens with normal variables, mm -hmm. which are disposed or at least cleaned up as soon as you go out of scope, yeah. if you have an I disposable and you put using in front, stuff will yep. work the same for disposable things. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So this this can really clean up some things, like uh, yeah, <laughs> as we like. Um, 
What else? Have you seen the indices and ranges? No, but if, if I look at the, the ones with the dots, it reminds me of uh, expand things and, and the way you uh, define ranges in other languages. Yeah. Well, but it's really interesting. What we, does have, it do? we have two things. We have uh, indices and we have a range. A range is uh, what you say, that's the dots. Yeah. And we have the, the exponential symbol like uh, that you see uh, in, in some of the examples. Uh, that's actually uh, in this. So it's, um, for instance, you know, we have a string, uh, an array of strings here, and we want to pick out um, the last one. So this uh, exponential symbol means last one and one back, and that's it. Yeah, so the, the length of the array minus one. minus one, right? Yeah, length minus one in that array that picks up this one. So it is really shorthand for length minus one yeah. in an array. Um, but you can also do um, a range. So you say, well, one, two, four. So that means uh, uh, all the way to index three. Yeah. Um, you will pick out the words. Cool. So if you're, you're doing some things with arrays and picking out one, uh, one spot, you can uh, also combine them. That means you have an indice and uh, you, you pick them out and you have the array of that. So, or the, uh, the range the of, range, yeah. yeah, so from two and that means that you can uh, combine all kinds of yeah, powerful, really short notations, which I think, again, they managed to uh, figure out a syntax that's not clashing with anything we already know. Yeah. Though. And it's really quick to get a hang of and, and to just start using because it's really simple. It's, if, you're, if you're doing some stuff with lists, it can really <laughs> simplify you'll, your life. You'll need this one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll post uh, some links so you can see uh, yeah. the four examples, or maybe, uh, yeah. yeah I we'll would put say. them in the comments. Yeah, pick it up and, uh, and start working with them. Cool. And so, then what else is there? Well, big one, um, nullable reference type. Okay. You've heard of them, I think. Yeah. So they're going to change something. Um, if, starting from C sharp 8, you can use the nullable reference type. Null is a problem. Yeah. We always check for null, right? Everywhere. Yeah, we always check for all, or we, we do not, and we run into problems. <laughs> yeah, or but you it would be really nice to, while you're typing the code, yeah. um, be aware of possible problems in there. Yeah, because have this the, is the powerful IDE just help you in defining yeah. what, or in, in finding out what could be a problem. Exactly, but that means that something um, should, should happen for you. I have here a simple example of some really simple code. Um, so this is a class, this works. If you would call this method here, it will break if you do not put any value in here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. This is where the nullable reference uh, stuff will start to help you out. This is Visual Studio Preview. Yeah. Uh, preview 3 of uh, 2019. Um, it's set to uh, C Sharp 8. Uh, it's set, uh, set to .NET Core 3. Yeah. Preview 7, I think. Um, but by default, it's not on at the moment. We need to do something. We can open up uh, the XML of the project file yep. by double-clicking it. That's such an awesome feature. But, okay, <laughs> let's Small things make you happy, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I know it. Um, and then you type here, you add the nullable, and you do enable. So there are a few settings for that. You will see them in the link we'll post. Yep. You also have report only and like, all kinds of things. I enable it, um, I go to the SEM demo, uh, and I'll build it again. Straight up, you will see this warning here. Nullable property description is uninitialized. Yeah, that's true, like it's uninitialized. You don't get the intent. Like from outside to use this class, you really need to know to set that, otherwise you will trigger this null yeah. reference. Yeah, true. So what you can do is like, oh, fine. <laughs> I'll put some stuff in there. Like these letters are nice and nicely combined. We need a semicolon. Um, the error will disappear. That's a well-known string, by the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, but so this is awesome because I know I've worked with the with the JetBrains annotation for not null on parameters for methods, yeah. for instance. But that just tells you compile time um, if there might be an issue with a parameter that you're sending somewhere that cannot be null. But this even um, sees that the description parameter or uh, sorry, property that you're using 
might also be null, and that's mm. way broader than the, the not null attribute I know from the V sharper yeah. annotations. Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah. And, and so you can also set it to break the build? Um, well, so at the moment, this actually, I was I'm investigating this, uh, and it looks like it's just building, even though I'm enabling right now. So we have to look in the uh, feature. If I set it disable, it's like the default. It's not in yeah. there. Um, I expect it enable to break a build. Yeah. You can do three, uh, treat war warnings or, or uh, as errors, of course, but I think um, this will, in the end, be breaking. Yeah, because uh, but uh, it's warning in my it's code. Still now. preview, of course. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm missing one setting. Um, but what you also see is like let's let's run, add a and another function, like normal. Oh. And I'm going to explicitly try to set this to null. I'm getting the same problem. Like, come on. What are you doing? I'm getting the same, uh, same warning. So don't do that, because cool. it's not designed like that. What you could do, of course, is start using this, like it's intended to be null. And of course, you get the warning here again because hey, it's a possible null reference. Cool. So now, well, we can combine all the powerful stuff we uh, we want. No, no. Now I'm doing uh, too much, of course. Um, but we have we have the question mark for nullable. Yes. Um, oh, this is not uh, intended behavior, of course. Um, and we we also have the what's it called? It's a parameter. You add the exclamation mark if you really want to do something. Yeah. So if you're like, in this case, I really need to do that. And it's the nullable forgiving operator. Yeah, something something like yeah. crazy. Like, I never forget that. And you add that behind your code. And it works. It clears up the error. Because in some cases, you really do need this. And then just turning it off for your full project is not an option. Yeah, but then it's good that you can explicitly say, okay, so I know I'm not supposed to do this. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to shoot my own foot off. <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. That's one uh, of them. That's the first step of going, you know, yeah, set, setting yourself up to fall <laughs> hard. Yeah, um, really nice, really nice stuff. Um, I'm really curious in my current projects what will happen if I start enabling this. Yeah, I would love to see that one. But, but the guys at Microsoft did this for the framework, actually building the .NET 3, the BCLs. Like there's a lot of cleaning up yeah. going on there. Um, so cool. Yeah, this well, is really cool. Looking at this, I would say as if you're not using this yet, or at least if you're not looking at this yet, I think you should because it, I think it even makes us more productive because there's less clutter. The code's easier to maintain, and I think in some cases even easier to, to write. Yeah, you see that it really helps you um, show what you're intending to code and yeah. not what it, what it does. And like, it just shows, shows you, it guides you through, uh, through a good path of coding. And that's the most important thing a language should do. So. The, the bugs are always in really tiny mistakes. Something with devil in detail. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's it for now. That's it for now. Uh, these are... Fun parts, which I picked up from C-Sharp 8. Um, try it, pick it up. Uh, in September, you will be uh, going through uh, to .NET Core 3. So yeah. everyone will have the opportunity, but like everything's there. You can yeah. take on the preview and just play with it because. Yeah, install Visual Studio 2019 preview. Enable C-Sharp 8 language features. You're good to go. Yeah, enable the nullable tag and See what <laughs> see what happens. Okay, so have fun with that one, and we'll see you uh, back for next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye.